Now we're ready to set up and provision Layer 3 virtual service networks. This is the last exercise in this series. There are some instances when you don't want networks to see one another. These are uh, good use cases for Layer 3 virtual service networks, which are true IP virtual private networks. Examples are internal department networks for research and development, uh, financial service networks, networks that require PCI or HIPAA compliance are very good candidates, but also uh, increasingly network networking, IP networking in particular, is being used for facilities control and video surveillance systems, things of that nature. These are also good candidates for the L3 BSN service. And then, of course, our use case of multi-tenancy is always a good point example for, for instance, multi-tenant data centers. So in our lab, we have, as per previous, a pre-provisioned service on the ERS 8800 to switch, which is the backbone edge bridge on the opposite side of the network. The purposes of this video and the exercise that we will undergo is to create a VRF on ERS 8800.4, create and associate a VLAN, and then attach that IPVPN into ICID 5300, and that will create an end-to-end -end IPVPN environment across the network. That will be the focus of this video. So if we go in and take a look at ERS 8800.4, we've done a quick show ISIS on TLV 184, and we can see that we do indeed have provision services uh, for IPVPNs, uh, and there are two ICIDs, 5300 and 5401. We're going to be associating to VRF ICID 5300 for the purposes of this exercise. One of the first things that we want to do, of course, is create a VRF. And that's a fairly simple command of IPVRF red. Now, it's always a good practice to create a loopback address or a clip for the VRF. This is good for uh, checking IP connectivity. Uh, and we're just going to say interface loopback 2, uh, recalling that we did use interface loopback 1 for IP shortcuts. So this is a very similar process. We're going to basically set up the interface. We're going to give it an IP address, and it will be uh, a slash 32 mask. Um, and as you can see, we've referenced what the VRF clip will be on our diagram, and that will be 192.168.0.1 slash 32. So we will just implement uh, imp input that here. And we will add the VRF context at the end of that command. Now we have a clip set up for VRF red. Now we want to go in and set up our end user VLAN. So we're just going to go in and create 350, specify it as a type by port. And now we want to go in and add our VLAN members. Recalling that uh, the switch we're attaching to is off of slot 1, port 17, uh, we're going to now just add that port to the VLAN. Now at this point in time, we will then go into the interface VLAN. And now we're going to associate this with VRF red. At this point in time, we can now set up our IP address, which we also have referenced as 10.150.150.1. And we will implement that here. And we will just use a classic 24 mask. So up until now, uh, there's nothing unusual. We've created a VRF. We've associated a uh, clip to it. Uh, we've assigned a VLAN at the edge, uh, made that an interface off of the VRF, and assigned an IP address. This is pretty normal stuff. Now we go into the specific SPB parameters. So we're going to go into router VRF red. 
And now that we're in the context of router VRF red, we're going to enter the IPVPN command indicating that we indeed do want to set up um, IPVPN for this VRF. Here is where we will enter our ICID value. And as you can see, we reference in the diagram and as we've shown in our link state database that we want to attach to ICID 5300. Now that we're done with that, we will then type IP VPN enable. And we have just set up a layer three virtual service network. It is that easy. Now, as per the IP shortcuts, you will notice that uh, this address will not be sourced into the network uh, and we need to run redistribution. The difference here is we're going to run it in the context of VRF Red. So at this point in time, we're just going to do an ISIS redistribute. Direct. And we're basically getting our warning again, indicating that the routes will not inject until after uh, the enable command. Uh, and uh, similar to what we did with IP shortcuts, we're going to basically say that we want to add a metric of one so that everything will be one hop away. And then the last thing we want to do is go in and enable redistribute direct. And keep in mind that throughout this whole time, we're under the context of the router VRF here. This is an important piece. We want to make sure that we're actually in the context of VRF Red as we're running these commands. Now that we've done that, uh, very similar to uh, IP shortcuts, we need to run our apply command. So that is simply ISIS apply redistribute direct. But here, the difference is, is we're going to type out the context of the VRF. Once we've done that, we're completed. We have now set up uh, uh, the VRF. Uh, we've given it a clip address. We've associated a VLAN uh, to that VRF, given an IP address to that VLAN. We've gone in and created an IPVPN environment and enabled it, associated it with ISID 5300, and then we've gone and run the appropriate redistribution commands. So now we've gone in and uh, on the ERS 8800-4 node, we've done a quick show IP route VRF red command. And as you can see, we are now listing the network that we just assigned, uh, subnet 150.150.0, and we can see that uh, we are showing our local interface. Uh, we're also showing that we have reachability uh, across uh, through interface 3998, which is our BVID, across ISIS, and uh, basically the next hop to reach those particular networks is ERS 8800.2. If we run the command show ISIS LSDB detail, or LSDB TLV 184 detail, realizing that we really only want to see the details on TLV 184, which is the TLV for L3 VSNs, we can see that we indeed are listing uh, the different networks. Uh, we show that ERS 8802 has the, the two network prefixes. We see that uh, now we have an extended IPVPN across the network. So in ERS 8804, the node we just provisioned, we see that our ICID is resident. We also see the clip address that we assigned and we see the IP network uh, that is associated uh, with this. And we can go in and add additional subnets and interfaces and associate them with VRF Red and they will automatically be associated with this IP VPN environment. In context to that, uh, if we go in and, uh, and log in to the network and, and show ERS 8802, And we do a show IP route for VRF Red. We can see that we see the same type of connectivity, except from the perspective of ERS 8802. So we're seeing now that we have our 150 network that we created, and it's reachable through ERS 8804. And 
10.100 and also the loopback address uh, that was for ERS-8802 VRF red is now showing as local interfaces. And similarly, if we run the command show ISIS LSDB TLV 184 detail, we get its perspective on the L3 VSN as well. Um, so as you can see, it's showing its own network services, but also as you can see, it is now aware through the type length value exchanges that ERS-8804 does indeed possess a VRF and that is associated with ISIT 5300. And this provides us the ability to get end-to-end -end connectivity within the network environment itself. Um, so that really wraps up uh, the uh, the show environment uh, for the L3 VSNs. Um, within the course of probably a little over an hour, uh, including all of my talking, we've gone in and we've set up uh, a shortest path bridging node within a Fabric Connect network. We've established the adjacencies with the Fabric. We've set up an exercise configuration and fault management. We've gone in and set up IP shortcuts to allow for IP connectivity via VRF0. We've gone in and we've set up L2 VSNs into the environment and added IP addressing to make them visible through the global routes. And then finally, we've provisioned and set up a true IP VPN environment. And I want to note that while we really did probably a little under a dozen commands to set up the L3 VSN uh, in all proper context, and that's including the VRF creation, the redistribution, and everything else, in order to do the same type of service with uh, an MPLS solution with Layer 3 VPLS, you would literally be typing in hundreds of command lines to instantiate the service instance. And also, in addition, that only covers the service instance in itself. There have to be additional reroute policies that have to be written for redundant label switch paths um, to allow for resiliency in MPLS. That is yet more command lines that have to be instantiated for each and every reroute policy. As we can see with shortest path bridging, we don't have to do that. We have complete knowledge within the link state database. Therefore, we do not have to instantiate any reroute policies for these IP VPNs. So that really shows how easy it is to set up a, uh, a Fabric Connect node and its established services and uh, do it in probably really total CLI context is probably a little under 20 minutes. Well, that wraps it up, guys. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time to view these videos. Again, these have been separated uh, for subject context for your convenience. So if you want to go back in and view any of these videos to refresh the command line sequences required, um, these are available at any time for your viewing pleasure. Thank you very much.